Championship Sunday has come to an end, and what a day! Legion 13, two out of five Live Golf League tournaments with the incredible Team Championship win. Team Championship today. And that is Greg Norman <laughs> that just grabbed the mic from me. As you can see, Ooh. we are excited. <laughs> Dean Burmester also taking the individual championship. Thanks, Greg, for that cameo. Uh, Dean Burmester, an outstanding playoff win. We're here to talk about it all. Welcome to Club 54 post-round show. I'm your host, Christian Crosby, and there was a champagne flowing. Uh, Sue Ann Hang joining me, Don Boulay, going all day long. And wow, what did we just watch? Dean Berminster getting that individual championship win. You got to follow uh, Sergio Garcia as well. Sorry, guys, I'm a little hype right now. <laughs> that so was wait. incredible what we just watched. Let's talk about it. <laughs> well, I'll go ahead. I, you know, Dean played so well all week this week. He drove the ball beautifully. And honestly, that was a huge advantage for him uh, going into today with his length and how good he is with his wedges. He's due. He's been due. Yeah. He came so close in Bedminster. He's played some great golf, obviously won twice in yep. the offseason. He deserves it. And not to say that Sergio didn't, but that was that was a close, close match. You know, we see throughout so many guys in their careers, you know, that he's he's on that upward trajectory and he's won a lot. But the wins, the two wins he had just before Christmas, you could just feel this was coming, yeah. you know. And yeah. on this golf course, you got to really play some golf to win, and it was fully deserved. Well, let's take a look at some Dean Berminster highlights from his incredible day here in Miami. Sue Ann, Dom, take us through this insane day for Dean Berminster. Well, you know, he said in his press conference yesterday, he has the tendency to rise above the nerves. And I think that's exactly what he did today. This part of his game to thrive all day today. You that followed him, so he buried the first two holes. He did. Brilliant he was start. off to a great start. Both him and Louis actually yeah. were off to a really good start. And this birdie here on the sixth. He was just hitting some clutch shots and making those putts. We always say this, you, ha you hit those great shots on a Sunday, but you have to make those Sunday championship putts. Yeah, it comes down to putting on a Sunday. You've got to convert, don't you? And he does, surely did. Oh, this, was, this was a big, big winning putt. Not easy with all that pressure on him. He probably wished Sergio hadn't made his putt for that five because it made that putt a lot harder. And it was a wonderful great moment for Dean, you know. With his family there, the kids came running onto the green. It was magnificent. And, you know, I'm sure his mom and dad, his dad, Mark's a lovely guy. Well, his brother's his, here, too. His brother's here, yeah. but his mom and dad are watching in South Africa, I'm sure. And they, apparently, they're going to go to Adelaide. Well, they Dom, should, by I, the, way, yeah. the way he's playing. I was going to say, Dom, I, I watched the interview at the end there. He got a little emotional when you yeah. asked him about his family. Yeah, and, it, you know, he had a lot of support out here, too. Yeah. You know, a bunch of South Africans. They were here all week. I heard them chanting. I think it was yeah. on the 16th hall. Did you, what, were, what were they chanting? What was that? So, uh, ole, 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 yeah. I think. But a uh, fun fact about that. I think that was that, for Sergio. Yeah, no, was that? no, no, that was, a, that was the South Africans. But oh. fun fact about that, though, he met them last night and gave all of them a bunch of tickets to come out here today to enjoy Sunday golf. That's uh, the kind of guy he is. Wait a minute, I thought David was joking when he said that. He actually just met them the night before. Yes, and he I passed see. them a whole bunch of tickets for them to come out and enjoy Championship Sunday. He's a top man. That's incredible. Let's talk a little Sergio Garcia. I mean, where do we begin with his day? Another playoff for him. Unfortunately, he did not get that done. Uh, where do we start with his day? Uh, what do you say, Don? You know what? Sergio is he's an iconic player. He's a legend of the game. He's been one of the best ball strikers the last 25 years. Greg Norman set out on course. He may be some of the best, uh, one of the best drivers of the ball in the last 25 years. It's just, you know, in a playoff, it's potluck. He just, yeah. he just maybe chose the wrong club on that second shot on the second hole playoff, and it got caught in the wind. But, uh, you know, we'll, he'll, he'll win. It's no question. He could win next week at the Masters. He's got some confidence. Thanks. That's Sergio. Hey, right Sergio. Good luck next week. Day, brother. 
Uh, speaking of the guy, yeah, there, there he goes right there, and seemed to be in great spirits, which just says so much about his character and his game. Uh, let's take a look at some of his highlights here. Talk us through it, guys. I, I love to hear you guys give us the yeah. Uh, well, I was following Sergio. Scoop. You know, he didn't manage to birdie the first hole, which is a par five, but this was his putt on two, and I thought, well, you know what, the stroke looks good. He looks pretty confident. He was never in any rush. And two great shots, a five wood for his second shot on the eighth. And you know, with the water on the left, that's a scary second shot. And I thought his long putting was great today. You know, he's laying it up, a lot of them stone dead. And this was a huge putt. This got him at the time to within one because Burmester just got it to 12 under. And then here on 17, well, look at this. This is what, a good 40 feet left to right break. Oh, Greg Norman and I were standing on the side of the green. It was in the moment it left the putter face. You know, when I heard that roar on the 18th, I thought he was going to close it out yeah. on the 18th. And that was it. That was to win this event, this big championship. But, uh, it was probably the, the only bad stroke he made all day. How, how difficult is it um, once you reach that point, you're in the playoffs, you're fatigued, not only physically, but mentally, um, a guy like Sergio, you know, do you foresee him uh, in future tournaments going all the way? And 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 how? What is it going to take for him to just really break through? Well, you know, like I said, Tita Green, he's great. One day he's going to catch catch hot with his putter, and he'll win by five or six. I truly believe it's it's in him. And I I honestly think with the confidence he's gained, he's going to take a lot of positives out of this. Next week. He is a contender because that's about ball striking. It's also about putting, but he knows those greens really well. He's won there before. I think he's a legitimate contender next week. It would be an understatement to call today a crazy day. Uh, it's been a roller coaster all day. Let's take a look at the individual score warm. Here we go. And uh, Sue Ann, you this said is this, look this, yeah, is this is my favorite. This is a Tetris. This is a Tetris chart. I is. mean, look at that. I mean, for most of the day, Sergio really had control over the round. And right up till the end, Dean was trying to catch up. Uh, it was just an exciting day, Dom. I mean, between yeah. you and I, listening to the broadcast, it's so much you fun. You know what? This, this course creates drama. And with with the crowds we had the last couple of days, you could hear the roars, and it, it, yeah. it was exhilarating. It really was out there. It was a it was a ton of fun. Social media was screaming. Here are some tweets supporting our guy Dean Berman, sir. Uh, come on, Dean. You gotta love this. Rooting him on. I have work tomorrow, and I can't stop watching there. <laughs> Monday morning. Let's go, Burmy. South Africa backing you all the way. Gotta love that one. Here's another one. I got this month's <laughs> rent on Dean. Well, that worked out for yeah, them. Great. Did. Congratulations. <laughs> <laughs> Some free rent there. Nearly 12 a.m. in Ireland. Uh, this is riveting golf. Go on, Dino. Got to love that. Uh, as we always love to, to get the social media posts from you guys. People were rooting on Dean, man. That was fun to watch. It's Club 54 post round show. And we got plenty more to talk about here in Miami. The sun is setting. It's beautiful. All right, today kind of reminded me of another day, the first uh, tournament in Mayakoba where Sergio Garcia went head to head with Waco Neiman in that playoff matchup. Let's take a look back in Mayakoba. 57 holes down, and they still can't be separated, and now it's decision time. We, we asked the players, you know, hey, come back tomorrow morning at 9 a.m. And, and finish this. Yeah, I was getting dark and I was like, oh, I don't. We gotta finish this today. But definitely a lot of energy there on, on the 18th green there in Mayako, but probably encouraging them to, to maybe give them a little more. Sir, you look at me saying, I'm good if you're good. If we wanna play one more. <laughs> here we go. Here we go. And we go again for a fourth playoff hole. He had a great drive, and, and that, that put him in a great position. We had a good idea, but you couldn't, you couldn't really see the flag. Unfortunately, didn't hit a, um, didn't hit a good second shot. Miles, right? Well, that would have been so much better off in the sand. It was pretty dark, but the good thing that you were able to see the green because of the, the screen that they had. 
the Heat are great shot. Yeah, it looked like he might have had a chance of hitting the flag and maybe ended up stone dead or something like that. But I knew I had to make this putt. Didn't want to wait and see if he was going to make his or miss it. A stunning show of character from Wacky Neiman. And, and obviously he, he made a great birdie. You know, I felt that pressure of being fighting for the tournament, which I was missing it for a while. This time went my way, which it was sweet. I'm going to enjoy it. It was great. It was great. <laughs> Got to love it. The sun is setting here at Trump National Doral. As you can see, it's absolutely beautiful. So many fans still around. And joining Sue Ann and I, Jerry Fultz, thanks for joining us here. Um, what a day. Yeah. Uh, we just talked about it a little bit, but would love to get your overall perspective of this incredible day ending in an incredible playoff. Well, you know, one, at one point we had five players tied for the individual lead, all five great players that came down to Sergio having a six and a half foot putt, a roughly six and a half foot putt to, uh, to win outright. He didn't make it, but the reason he even was in that position is because he made nearly a 50 footer on 17. Uh, ultimately, it was just a mishit iron shot in the second playoff hole that cost him. But what a great week for Sergio. What a great week for, for uh, Dean Burmester, though. Everybody knows he's a world class player. He has the respect of all of his peers out here. Um, and to get it done for the first time, um, it was it was really, really cool. Well, as expected on a course like this, a lot of uh, changes might happen on the team leaderboard. Legion 13 started with a three day uh, three shot lead and then at one point they had a nine shot lead and it came all the way down to the wire some impressive golf and clutch golf from Rom as well as Kieran on the first at one point they had a 96 percent chance of winning mathematically <laughs> oh my God. and it came down to <laughs> Kieran Vincent needed to shake it a three footer on the final hole but the neat part to me was John Rom he when he made his putt on two to what he thought would seal the deal the reaction he knew he was out of it individually but the reaction from him team golf does matter and this is only his fifth event as a captain it's really cool seeing John get excited yeah. for his team <laughs> playing for his team Let's take a look at some Legion 13 highlights from our final day here on Sunday. Here's Legion. Caleb Surratt. This for birdie on the eighth. I follow Tiro all day. His driver gave him some issues. He walked this one in, though. Didn't think he was going to make it. Had a nice chuckle after that. John, what a solid week he's had. Three rounds under par. I'm sure he's going to go into the Masters with some confidence. Yeah. And this putt was just enormous because if he doesn't make this, it, I mean, it, before Kieran even tried getting up and down at one, <laughs> he thought that was to seal the deal. But Kieran made us the same mess of one that John Rahm had made just moments earlier, but was able to shake that a little more than three feet. I'm probably the most nervous man he's ever been on a golf course because by that point, he knew that putt was for the team title. Here's a question. Uh, the newest team to live golf, obviously, Legion 13. For them mm -hmm. to win two out of five tournaments this early in, how special is that, would you say? Well, and, and like Sue Ann will tell you, they have two world class players on that team in Terrell Hatton and John Rahm. Obviously, Rahm in the short conversation for best player in the game. But they have two guys who are completely green behind the ears, and they have been MVPs. Now, Kieran played poorly today, no, make no mistake about it, but the, you can only, you can only, Count on count on a team with two rookies to be so competitive, and those guys, especially Caleb Surratt and Kieran Vincent, have been just sucking it up whenever required. And by the way, John Rahm and Tyrrell, they don't only have to play golf now; they have to be mentors, they have to be role models to the two younger guys. And I know Rahm's been spending a lot of time with Caleb, trying to mentor him, trying to guide him. He's still a young player, a lot to learn. But what an advantage to learn from a guy like John as well as Terrell Hatton. I mean, that's the best school you can huge, go to. Huge, huge advantage. <laughs> and and, and the, John Rahm has even enlisted the help of Phil Mickelson yeah. to help mentor another team's player in Caleb Surratt. And Patrick Reed as well, by it, the way. Uh, well, that's some pretty good mentors right there, well, especially when you're talking the, short uh, game. Sorry, Jerry. Let's take a look at the uh, team scoreworm here. And Sue Ann, since this is your favorite thing. 
<laughs> I wish you could don't see that. Don't make me do right it, Christian. Come on, Jerry. Take this one. Jerry, take you don't my got Tetris chart. Like the worm? Come take, on. No, I love the worm. I take my Tetris chart. I Jerry, you love the worm. worm. Come on, Jerry. <laughs> that looks like an etch a sketch from my old days as a kid. But yeah, no, it, it, was, it was up and down, up and down coming into the day between Range Goats and Legion. But Legion just did enough today to hold them off. Well, let's take a look back at that Maya Koba win from Legion 13. Take a look. Joaquin was assessed the penalty, right? So that took us from five back to three back. Okay, we can actually truly do this, right? We can make that up on the first hole. Now then, Karen Vincent. Yep. We didn't really have a game plan. It wasn't like, Terrell, you do this, Caleb, you do this. Like, it was more of just go play golf and see what happens. This is far from done. John Rahm. Money. Money. Legion 13 on margin. It was so clean. I, you know, I was... I was just cruising. Legion 13, a 12 under for the day. They're easily the best in class on Championship Sunday, and they lead by seven. I struggled on hole 17 all week. No, no, he knew it. And I just, I hit another bad one. Oh, no. Oh, no, no, no. I had the triple, and then I literally look up at the leaderboard, and as I'm walking to the next tee, we go from a four-shot lead to one one-shot lead. Caleb Surratt's seven. I mean, I didn't even talk to my caddy on the way in. I just told him on 18T that we're going to get it back. Caleb Surratt for a bounce-back birdie after that triple bogey. Well played, young man. I just kept telling myself one more. Just one more. One more. Caleb Surratt for another birdie. Surratt pulled up next to me to like, I'd have to wonder how he got a driver's license. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's so young looking. Well, Legion 13 are going to win their debut competition in Live Golf. What a start for them. One thing we spoke about a little bit is how cool it was to be able to do that without Rom playing his best in the final round. Oh, I was sick. I was having the roughest day. It truly was a team effort, right? If you could describe teamwork as a feeling, you, you, you could feel it right there. I didn't even hold the champagne. I, I'm the designated trophy holder for the next couple years at least. Love to see that team. And as you can see, we're tossing it over to Rachel Drummond. You're going to show us some of the chips that these guys will face in uh, Augusta this week coming up, right? The beauty of tech. I can see you on my <laughs> left. I can see you yeah, down here. Yeah, we're getting used to that one. The sun is setting. I'm in absolute heaven right now. And what a champion, Dean Burmester. If you're watching, what a man. But there were so many tricky chip shots this week here at Doral and Masters next week. There's certainly going to be some more. So we're going to have a little look at some of the shots the players faced this week. So here's Sergio, tight lie. He actually used quite a lot of wrist hinge in this shot. I'm going to teach you a slightly different one in a minute. Leaving a little bit of work there. We've got Matthew Wolf again, an exceptionally tight lie, keeping the club outside his hands, missing the landing area slightly. But such demanding shots, and they're definitely going to have these tight lies at Augusta and Dean Burmester. When he needed it, got his landing area, left a tap in. I bet he was absolutely buzzing when he hit it that close for a tap in. Now, I'm going to teach you how to play a chip shot off an extremely tight lie. Now, I've spoken to the crew here, and they have anxiety like me when I get this shot. So I'm hopefully going to give you something that's going to simplify it and make it very simple. So the best way to do this is chip as if you're putting. You're going to set up technically wise like it's a putt. So I've got my 50 degree wedge. I'm going to get the toe into the ground and I'm going to stand really close to the golf ball and then going to get a little bit of pressure on my lead leg. I'm also going to get my thumbs pointing down. So when I do that, it gets my wrists in a certain position. So there's not going to be as much wrist hinge. So I'm literally setting up for the shot I want to play. Typically, you'd see people standing a little further away, a little more wrist angle, but I want you close. Right, so I've got my 50, I'm standing close. And it's just a rock of the shoulders and a turn. So toe in the ground, really close to the golf ball. Rock of the shoulders and a turn. So it's keeping it really, really simple. Justin Rose says he always sets up for the shot that he wants to hit. So if this was on a slightly fluffier lie, he'd probably be standing a little bit further away, opening the club face. But again, because it's a tight lie, we're going to stand close. I'm pretty buzzing about that one. I'm just going to go and give myself a pat on the back. 
<laughs> so we're close again. Thumbs down, turn back and turn through. And it is the simplest way to play the shot. Now, you can also do this with less loft, same technique. And I'm gonna give you one more tip that I want you to try at home. So every green will have this cut here and it's about a stride onto the green, there is another cut. It's quite hard to see, but you can just about see it here if you zoom in. So this becomes your landing area on every chip. So if I was chipping to this flag, I'd hit my 60, land it here, release. Because I've got a flag further away, I'm going to chip it here and allow it to roll the whole way down. So I have my eight iron. I'm going to get it landing in this landing spot and then allow it to release down to the pin. So you've got a few different ways you can play this. You've got the toe down, it's a little bit steamy. Toe down, stand really close, thumbs down, rock back and rock through. And then you've got a little strategy that you can try with this landing area. Chipping is exceptionally difficult at every stage of the game. So if you've got a consistent landing area and you just change your club, you're going to give yourself a lot more chance to hit some good chips. Give this one a go and hopefully the anxiety will go. <laughs> Gotta get rid of that anxiety, right? <laughs> yeah, well, I didn't see those chips when I played with her on Tuesday. Those are some great dispersions there. Oh, what are you saying? <laughs> Well, wow. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, Dom and I beat her and Gareth Lord on Tuesday, so I'm sure we're going to have a rematch in Australia. And speaking of Australia, that's a shot that you're going to need in Australia. Some really tight lies at the Grange, and so that shot's going to come in handy. Well, when I first came here, obviously I'm new here to live. When I first came here, I asked everyone, favorite stop, favorite stop. Everyone kept saying Adelaide. I asked them why, and they said the fans, take a look at this. Bryson DeChambeau leading the pushes and Ripper, absolute bedlam. All to beauty. What go next with the ace? Bad light, see you on the watering hole. Right there. Oh, that's what champions do. This is the future of golf. Are you ready? Cannot wait for Australia. Uh, Dean Burmester just literally walked by us with the trophy in hand. Uh, couldn't be more excited about our next stop. Let's talk about it. What can we look forward to seeing at this next one? Oh, crazy crowds. Oh, yeah. my We're goodness. Be double it, the size of last year. Yeah. yeah. Look forward to the watering hole. The watering hole is where you need to be. That's where I'll be most of the off hours, actually, <laughs> even if there's nobody there. But uh, no, it's a great, great golf course. Way different in style to this. It's old style. You have to control the ball, but you don't need a lot of length to play well there but it's just going to be it's going to be absolutely nuts uh last question we got about 30 seconds left in this show who are you most excited to watch in adelaide after what happened today anyone oh my goodness cam smith <laughs> cam smith <laughs> okay. any of the rippers are going to be they're treated yeah. as rock stars down there but cam right. smith he could be elected prime minister all right you heard it well i can't wait to see you guys there thank you for watching club 54 post round show i'm your host christian crosby until next time peace